So here, here's kind of a fun thing, and one of the things that with succulents that I think is, is really cool is you can have a lot of fun with them. They're relatively easy, forgiving plants. And I had a plaque that said, uh, Bienvenidos mi casa es su casa, which means welcome, uh, my house is your house. And I broke the plaque. And normally you might try to glue it back together, but you'd see this break or, or you might throw it away. And I thought, well, it'd be fun to create a dish garden and place it into the dish garden. Someone could place this at the front of the house and rather than try and hide the crack, maybe use the crack. And so with the succulents, I planted them around the plaque here. And I also planted them in the crack where the, the plaque had actually broken. So what I was trying to do is just create a fun little uh, garden that someone might put on their patio uh, as a welcome sign to the people who came. But even more than that is the idea that people use succulents in lots of fun ways. They take old boots and they cut out the toe and they put the plants in. Or we're on the coast of California and I'm, I'm one of those people who goes out and gets abalone now and then and maybe the shell, you could take the shell and plant uh, succulents in it and the, the colors of the succulents work well with the mother of pearl of the inside of the abalone shell so using your imagination to have fun with these plants is part of the experience it's really your ability to kind of um, take things that are fun for you and match them up with the succulents and it just makes it all the more fun Today we're visiting the wonderful gardens of Robin Stockwell, a wonderful designer who was featured in the San Francisco Flower Show in 2010. So, Robin. Yes. Tell me. Welcome to Succulent Gardens, my succulent paradise. Absolutely. I'm, look, I am looking around at everything that I see over here and it actually looks incredible. Can we take a look around? Well, we can. I, I just want you to know that this is referred to by most designers as the candy shop. So, oh, I, 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 no doubt. Shopping no doubt. paradise. Let's go. All right. Thanks. I'm Robin Stockwell, and I'm in the succulent growing business, and that's what I do. I, uh, I have a nursery that's about three acres. It's located in an, a little area called Elkhorn, which is part of Castroville, and it's right near the Monterey Bay in between Santa Cruz and Monterey, California. And the whole idea here is to grow succulent plants to show people how big they get, to uh, make sure they are all named and the information about them is contained on the uh, labels that go on the plants, and to teach people how to use these plants uh, all over, particularly the western uh, part of the United States uh, and hopefully in other parts of the country as well. But our main focus is coastal California. Um, so I grow about 600 varieties of succulents. And um, well, let me give you a tour. Maybe I could show you around the nursery. And this is a mural that uh, we planted about nine months ago and it's mounted on a wall. And it has a drip system in the top so that when we water it, we actually hook a hose up to it, turn it on, and then we just uh, leave it on for about 40 minutes and it waters through uh, two, two rows of panels. There's actually 12 panels total. Uh, and I'm assuming this will be up for a couple of years before it has to be replanted. Most of, most of the plants I use uh, I use a lot of rosettes. These are sempervivums, different kinds. This is an Echeveria secunda. Up here we have Echeveria elegans. And then you can see interlaced between them are different sedums. This is Angelina. This is uh, Sedum hispanicum. And there's probably about 40 varieties of succulents just in this one garden. And uh, what I try to use is plants that stay nice and compact 
they may cascade some if they cascade so much like this sedum right here which is sedum album when it starts to cascade it's going to cover other plants so if it gets to be where it's actually shading the plant too much we're going to prune it back and we'll just take and clip the plants off like this so that the plant has been removed and it'll branch behind where we pruned it and that's going to help maintain this nice compact look of the garden. I planted the uh, mural at, uh, for Flora Grub and I work with her fairly closely on planting um, orders for her when people come in and they want a mural. I work both on the wholesale side and the retail side so people are welcome to come into the nursery here and buy directly from us. Uh, we're actually opened on Monday through Monday through Saturday uh, for customers to come in. So it's 42,000 square feet. It's a wood structure greenhouse. It was built in the 19, uh, about 1980. So it's about 30 years old. Uh, it was used for growing carnations. And when I was, I had a store in Carmel for almost 30 years and, and I wanted to start growing more succulents for my store in Carmel. So I looked around for a greenhouse that I could rent and I wanted about 5,000 square feet of greenhouse. Found this, it was not being used at the time. So I thought, well, I could use a portion of this greenhouse. Started growing the plants here in 2003 and that kind of took on a life of its own. Succulents became extremely popular with uh, designers and, uh, and eventually with the general public. And now we're in the middle of, of uh, what is uh, a general public that's realizing that these plants are very functional. They're very useful in the landscape. They offer the benefit of low maintenance uh, and they, they really don't need a whole lot of care and fertilizer. I want to emphasize they do need care, but they don't need as much as many other plants. This is a 42,000 square foot greenhouse, and if you look at the roof on this greenhouse, it doesn't allow a lot of light in because it's an old fiberglass roof. And we actually use this house for propagation, and these are all plants uh, that are, we produce from cuttings in this house, and we place them in the soil to produce roots. In, a, in what is basically a low light area. And having low light, it warms up nice in here during the day, but the light's not that bright, and that takes some of the stress off the plant, which allows them to root more easily. Uh, once they're rooted, we move them into a different area for growing. This plant right here, this is an Echeveria, but it's a, a special form of an Echeveria. This is called Echeveria ramolette, and it's a cristate form of Echeveria ramolette. So the normal form of ramolette is to be a rosette and this particular one, the rosette, has changed genetically and it's growing kind of in a curvy fashion, kind of a brain-like shape. This is the plant that we had seen up on the mural. This is Echeveria elegans and it's uh, one of the classic old hen and chicks. And they're called hen and chicks because you can see the rosette. If you look at this plant right here, you'll see this is the mother plant, the hen, and this over here is the chick. And so this rosette produces babies off to the side and that's how they get the name hen and chicks. You can really see that over here when you move over to this grouping of plants where you see lots of the chicks coming off. And that's how we reproduce this plant, is when the babies come off the side of the plant, we can take them off and then produce more plants.